Good evening, friends. Glad you're with us tonight. You ready? Oh, this study on the Holy Spirit. Boy, really a lot of questions. Let me, let me encourage you. Let me tell you, if there's any way for you to come on Wednesday nights in building, um, boy, I'll tell you, do it. Because the discussion that we've been having over the past couple of weeks that we're unable to have uh, through this medium, it's just been amazing. And there's so much more um, that those discussions lead to. So I'd encourage you, if you can come on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock in the sanctuary, join us, okay? But in the meantime, you're here and we're going to learn. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the Holy Spirit of God. Teach us, we pray, Lord God. Continue to teach us how important he is in our lives. We praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. I, I want you to start off because last week we talked about where Jesus kind of gave us the, uh, the, the teaser, if you will, of the Holy Spirit's work in the New Testament believer. That's who we are. So now Paul expands that in his epistle, and there's a couple areas we're going to go to, and, and this is going to be over the next couple of weeks, so be ready. But I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Again, have your Bibles ready. Don't just watch the screen. Have your Bibles. Get into the Bible. Look at what it says. The Lord is speaking through us. And go to verse number nine, 19. Verse 19 of 1 Corinthians 6. And it says, Do you not know that your body, your body, is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Now, the Corinthians that heard this letter would have understood the temple very clearly. Maybe to the New Testament believers, we don't understand temple as much because we call our building uh, the church. But they would have understood because in the temple was the Holy of Holies that contained the ark. And that's where, again, the understanding of the very presence of God was. And so what, what Paul is equating is saying, your body, now that you belong to Jesus, you are the temple you have within this body, the Holy of Holies. And that's where the Holy Spirit of God resides. But then he goes on and he's going to elaborate on this more to his book to the Romans. And he says, you were bought with a price. You're not your own. Understand, we, we are the children of the devil, if you will. That's what the scripture tells us because of sin. We don't belong, and we'll talk about belonging in a few minutes, but now that Christ has entered our life, it says that we belong to God. How, how does that work in? And, and the, the, the proof of that, the, the, the benefit of that, is that now in our holy of holies, if you will, if you take the temple analogy, is the Holy Spirit of God. I mean, it's amazing to think that the Holy Spirit supernaturally fills this body, our mind and our heart. And that's why certain things happen the way they do and how we feel um, when the Holy Spirit of God comes about. So how do we expand on that, friends? Where do we move forward? So I want you to go to the book of Romans now. I want you to go to Romans. I want you to go to Romans chapter 8. And I want you to start with verse uh, number 9. Romans 8 verse 9. Because as we have the Spirit of God, and again, we have learned in the different classes over the couple of weeks that the Holy Spirit of God, um, you know, helps us remember, teaches us. He's our paraclete, which we learned a couple weeks ago. Um, now that the Holy Spirit, the Holy of Holies is in this temple, there are human nature that is here that is not happy about it. And so he goes to verse number 9, and he says, You, however, this is Romans chapter 8, you with me? Okay. You, however are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. Now we would say, hallelujah, praise God. Next line. Look at the next words. If the Spirit of God 
lives in you. Uh Uh-oh. Well, how do I know? That's what salvation and faith is, friends. When we commit our life to Jesus and we are bought with a price and we belong to God, we believe the Holy Spirit of God comes in. That's the salvation. And that's a little bit confusing for Pentecostal believers. And I'll explain what I mean in just a few moments. Let's continue on in verse 9. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. We'll get into that in a moment. But if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. There is so much to unpack there, but let me unpack verse 10 before we go to verse 9. Paul's making it clear, if if Christ is now in you, the body, which is this, this human nature, is dead. Why? Because sin filled it. We, 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 we were born in this dirt of sin. And he's saying that the body cannot be reached. Now, obviously, we're alive, we're breathing, heart is beating, all those things are happening. But our connection to God is dead. It's, it's like a dead cell phone. You know, if you can push the buttons all you want, you can try to push everything you want. If the cell phone battery is dead, it is dead. And it's the same thing. Without Christ... The battery, the recharge, the Holy Spirit, that body is dead. It doesn't matter how pious or how sweet or how nice anybody looks. Without the Holy Spirit of God coming in through the acceptance of Jesus Christ, the connection to God is dead. But then it says to the Christian, because you have it, your spirit is now alive because of righteousness. So the body cannot connect with God, but the spirit can. Because the Spirit is recharged by the Holy Spirit of God. So so that's what you've got to remember. You're connected to God because the Holy Spirit resides in you. It is not because you've studied so much or you have an understanding or you have a degree in this or you've been to church for 50 years. None of that is the reason. The reason is that Christ is in you. And the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. So, now we can go to verse number 9. And and we begin to unpack what Paul is saying. And he says, you're not controlled by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives inside of you. So, that is the first connection. Now, I mentioned before uh, the confusion with Pentecostal. And, and I, I, I want to make sure you understand something very clear. Because some people use the phrase, um, spirit-filled. And I have used it too. I think it's, it's an understanding in Pentecostal circles that the, the, the idea of spirit-filled is the, the next endowment of power that comes after you're saved that's available to you through what we call the baptism or the, the filling Um, or infilling of the Holy Spirit of God. But let's make something abundantly clear. Okay? The Spirit of God is in you, resides in that Holy of Holies section of this temple when you commit your life to Christ. It is not you commit your life to Christ, and then when this Holy Spirit baptism occurs, you do. So so the word Spirit-filled outside of Pentecostal circles may bring a lot of confusion. And that's why you may have discussions and debates with some people. So so let's make it clear. If you are saved, the Holy Spirit is in you. This baptism of the Spirit, this, this, this work of grace that the Holy Spirit does for witnessing and for boldness and for the gifts, which, again, we'll get into in, in a future date. It's a totally separate thing. So I I want you to leave this teaching today understanding that if you are saved, you're born again, you are regenerated by the Holy Spirit of God, you have confessed with your mouth Jesus is Lord, you believed in your heart God raised him from the dead, okay? You have the Spirit of God dwelling within you. 
That's a very important thing. So Paul's making that clear. That says you, you're not controlled by the sinful nature anymore. You're controlled by the Spirit. And then he begins to elaborate more about the benefits of this Spirit-filled life. Uh, there I go. I said the same thing, but, but it's used in that context uh, of being filled with the Spirit of God through salvation. Okay, and I want you to turn to, to Romans chapter 8, and I want you to turn to verse 15. Okay, Romans chapter 8, and I want you to go to verse number 15. Okay, and, and, and Paul says to, to the Roman people, you there? Okay, for you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you have received the spirit of sonship. Other translations will use the spirit of adoption. And those words can be used interchangeably. All right, let's continue. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. And the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. All right, let's see. You ready? Here we go. I want to make sure we don't get confused, but I want to make sure you understand this. Because the key phrase of adoption, I think, is just going to change so much of our understanding. Okay? People have said and declared, and I, I wouldn't negate it in a very general sense, not a specific, a general. Um, all humans are God's children. I would go so far as saying that all humans are God's creation. And there's a reason that I would use the word creation more than children in this context, okay? Because when you think about a family, now, again, being born to my mom and dad, I had all the rights and inherent all of that that when now my father passed in 98, mom is, thank God, doing well and with us. But, but when, when she goes to see the Lord one day, uh, and this will happen with my children and farther down the line, the whole thing, I and my two brothers and sister, four of us total, we are heirs <clears throat> of mom. They'll ask, who are the heirs that are here? Who are her children? That's us. So anything that would have been um, left for us by her wishes, we will receive. Now, there are many friends and family and all people she's loved, but they're not heirs. We are the heirs. So we get the, uh, the, the benefits of, of, of what she had and brought down directly to us. Are you with me so far? Just not. <laughs> okay. When we are born on planet Earth, we are God's creation. Okay? Everybody who is born is God's creation. That's why we're so against people that will just take a life, no matter where it is, how it works, through abortion, through murder. We are God's creation. But hear that verse again. So it says, you, you didn't receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear. Okay, you, you, you can't go backward. But you've received the spirit of adoption. I'll use that term. And that term allows us to cry, Abba, Father. And it's interesting because Abba, that word Abba, isn't the formal Greek word for father. It's an Aramaic word. And it is a more intimate, I, I would suggest to you, um, daddy. Daddy is a more intimate term that's used by people. And so it's a reflection of the fact that when you commit your life to Christ, one of the benefits of the Spirit is that you are now adopted into the family of God through the righteousness of Jesus. So you receive all the benefits. That's why when the scripture tells us we are heirs of God and joint heirs 
with Jesus Christ. Jesus, of course, being the oldest son. For God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. We're now adopted into that family. We receive the benefit. What benefits? Well, let's face it. Jesus died, resurrected, came back in a new body, lives forever. Because now we are in that. We die, we're resurrected, new body, we live forever with God. All of God's creation are not going to get the new body. They're not going to be resurrected in that sense. They're going to live separated from God. You understand? So, so right there, that's because of the spirit of adoption. So Paul is, is making the point of saying, listen, there's a benefit, a great benefit to having this salvation where the spirit is in you. Because it reminds you, it, it's kind of like your will, if you will, that says, this is what you will receive. I, I, I love the beautiful hymn, Blessed Assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of his spirit and washed in his blood. That's what John said, 1 John 3.24 this is how we know he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave to us. So understand, we are now God's children. Now, it's going to upset some people to use that idea, but I, I think in this context, it give us, gives us the differentiation between God's creation. Because if, if all were God's children and benefits, and, and everyone, the, the atheists, the uh, the, the, the Muslim, the, the, um, anybody that is against or, or does not follow Jehovah God. Say, well, they're all God's creation, so what's the difference? And, and that's where a universalism of religion comes in. It say, well, we're all God's children. We're all together. And like I said, I would rather, in my opinion, it'd be all, we're all God's creation. We all are, but we all... We still need to be adopted into the family of God because sin separated us at birth. And we need to come in and, and hear that. I, I hear stories so much about those who have adopted children. And it just melts my heart to know that they are, they, they said, this is my child now. They're going to get all the rights and benefits as if my, my wife had just, you know, birthed a baby. It's the same. I think that's a beautiful understanding of what God gives to us. All right, for the last few minutes, in seeing this whole idea of the temple and the benefits, I want you to go to Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 10. All right? And again, this is just something that relates to our human spirit now. And it says, But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, and yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. Now, we, we've heard that. We know that. That the body is separated and dead. Your, your spirit is alive. But look at verse 16. Just move down a little bit. And it says, The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are the children of God. What spirit is that? The spirit of God has to testify, has to say, yes, there's been an adoption in this family. This person is not separated any longer. They are my child, and they belong to me. You see, in many humans, the human spirit isn't connected to the Creator. That's why we use the words creation. It sustains physical life, but essentially... That this human spirit, apart from God, is dead to God. That's why I love when the King James says that, that the word quicken, says it makes alive our spirit. See, again, go back to the cell phone analogy. You can have a cell phone. It could do anything you want, but the battery is dead. It is useless, friends, right? It's useless. You know that. If you're watching this on the computer... And your battery all of a sudden died. No power connected. Doesn't matter. You say, oh, I watched Pastor Ron. No, you only saw part of it. Why? 
because the battery is dead. And if it's not going to help you, you can't just sit there. So oh, I'll watch Pastor Ron at seven o'clock, put it on, put on and nothing happens. Sit there for 20 minutes and say, oh, I, I watched them. No, it was useless. That is the part that we need to get out. Not that people are useless, but there is such a great benefit. There is so much. And what's the benefit? We, we've talked about it here. We've talked about it before. The Holy Spirit working within us. That's why we have to get the word about salvation. Not just being a good person, but saying the commitment and understanding the cross. And that's why, if I can go there for a moment, that's why if, if you, you take Romans uh, 10 and make it clear that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, you believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. Those two things will trigger a spirit-connected life. How's that? Where the spirit comes in you. And you say, well, what about the ones that have said that and said they believed it, but it hasn't? I would suggest to you that then they haven't really believed it yet. I mean, there's no other understanding. Yes, they may be figuring it out or 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 trying to understand. That's why discipleship of people is so very important. That's why we continue these teachings so that you can grow in this word so that that confidence, remember it said before, you don't want to go back to a spirit of fear. You want to be declared as a child of God. So my friends, the, the, the idea of, of the spirit of God as a coming into this temple, and we're going to explore more uh, next week, is so essential because Jesus said that you need to be born again. The Spirit needs to come in, but now we're understanding where the Spirit resides, how He resides, and what benefit immediately it does for us. So I hope you'll be with us next week um, to continue on this discussion and see what else God has for us, okay? And we praise the Lord for you, and we're so grateful. You're going to be, um, if you're still at home and not in building, you're going to be hearing some announcements on Sunday uh, regarding some more changes that are coming out. But again, we're trying to encourage you. Get to the house of God. Don't be content in staying home. You need the fellowship. And I'm hoping these, uh, these new additions to the ministry that are coming will help you in that, okay? Let's pray. Father, thank you for teaching us. Father, I just pray that as your Holy Spirit is in us, we would be uh, convinced and included with the fact, Lord, that we are a child of God. And Lord, that we have all those great benefits that you give because of it. Help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you next week.